Hi, my name is Matthew Sharapa, and I can't win. Many of you might be aware of the fact that I broke my arm in January. It's my entire personality. Well, said arm got infected, so I was in the hospital for five days. I had to have an emergency surgery. They recut the scar, cleaned out the tissue, and I have been pumped full of antibiotics. Like, so many antibiotics. When my arm was open, they had taken tissues from it and grew cultures from those tissues in an effort to target what was infecting my arm. I will spare you the details of how I found out about my arm being infected because they are so disgusting. Bodies are gross. But I was in the hospital for those five days because while those cultures were growing, they were narrowing down the antibiotics that they were giving me. Before I left the hospital, I got this. I got a little pick line inserted into my body. And at home, I'm going to be pumping myself full of antibiotics for four weeks. That is on top of pills that I will also be taking. And then for three months, I said months, after that I'll be taking more pills, antibiotics. But this will luckily be able to be removed from my arm. You know, the line that's going through it. Today, a nurse is on the way to show me how to use the pick, and I will be infused with antibiotics all day long. And that is scary. But before she gets here, I thought I would talk about the four books I finished while I was in the hospital, and then also the books that I purchased online for myself while I was in the hospital, because I deserve them. The first of the books was on my most anticipated reads of the year list, and that was Nobody's Magic by Destiny O. Birdsong. I'm not going to go too in-depth into discussing this book in this video, because I'm hoping to do a recap or a series of recaps of my most anticipated reads for the year. And if you haven't seen that video, I will link it below if you are interested. Nobody's Magic is a triptych. It's marketed as a novel. It has a novel on the cover. I don't think it has any benefit being referred to as one. I feel like, if anything, readers might be frustrated by it, thinking that in some way the three very individual stories might come together. Thematically, they come together. It feels very cohesive as a book, but I wouldn't refer to it as a novel. Nobody's Magic follows three individual characters separately from one another. You hit one, the next, and the third. They are all black women in the South with albinism. And through these three characters, you get to see a wide array of experiences, not just from their perspectives, but from the people around them as well. It's so richly developed. It's so intricate and sweet and subtle and some of the best sex scenes I've read in quite some time. Like, yes, some of them are sexy, but a lot of them are just psychologically enriched and, like, interesting. So I really appreciated that. I think this is a, a, a gorgeous book, and I am very glad that I anticipated it, purchased it, and read it. But I will talk more about it in a video to come. Next, I read My Annihilation by Fuminori Nakamura. This is translated by Sam Bett. I really enjoy this book cover because it has the die cut. This, like all of Fuminori Nakamura's books that I have read so far, was a very quick read. It is psychologically bizarre and not in a way that actually seems to adhere to what we actually know about psychology today. It's very, like, Freud speculative psychology, and often very antagonistic towards women. So not necessarily the most palatable read, but a very interesting one. This book is a book within a book in many ways. It's epistolary, but it also addresses the reader directly, and sometimes indirectly, and I found that it's ability to kind of split open characters was fascinating. This is a, a very complex book that I don't think is in any way, like, praising the abhorrent things that its characters do, but does sensationalize them. So a little squeamish, maybe, while reading it, but I really have enjoyed nearly every book I have read by this author and will continue to pick them up as they come out. Next I read The Movement by Petra Hulova. This is translated from the Czech by Alex Zucker, and I enjoyed this book, but it wasn't necessarily an easy read. This is a dystopian novel where men are being transformed in some mysterious way, 
at an institute, but the translation to me felt oddly rigid. And that's difficult when reading a dystopian, right? Because the way that a dystopian works is that our perspective character is speaking practically about impractical or unrealistic things. She talks about the movement. She talks about the future in a way that to any person on our end of the world, we would find absurd. But she speaks to it with ease, and that is what grants us the world building of a dystopian. Most dystopians work that way. But I think because the text itself felt so unmovable to the reader, so like unwilling to be interpreted or, 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 or flowed with, it, it didn't quite connect. The narration style, which we were supposed to buy into from this one character's perspective, got trapped up in a writing style or translation style, I don't know which, that doesn't really allow a certain amount of investigation. But as a look at feminism and sexual norms, I think it's an interesting read. I do recommend it if you are interested in dystopians. It certainly was not a waste of my time. The last book I finished in the hospital was an audiobook, and that was Archangel's Kiss by Nalini Singh. If you watched my vlog where I read Paranormal Romance, and urban fantasy as part of a readathon. I talked about the first book in this series in that vlog, and I loved it, and it was super fun and trashy, and just like, you know, if you want to read finger banging for 40 pages with angels and vampires, pick it up. What I do like about this series so far is that it's not a lot of action. I mean, there's action, like sexy action, but it's mostly just interpersonal politics. It's a lot of interpersonal tension and relationship development that's driving the plot. It doesn't really focus as much on like vampire hunting or battles in the way that a book like this could easily do. It's more instead just like unpacking trauma and talking about how much you want to fuck each other. And I really enjoyed this book and I will continue to read this series because we all need a little bit of trash in our lives. So those were the books that I read while I was in the hospital. I also purchased one, two, three, four, five, six books while I was in the hospital because comfort is wrapped up in consumerism. The first of these purchases I think was my most justifiable, and that is Negotiations by Destiny O. Birdsong, which is a poetry collection. I really loved Nobody's Magic, therefore I picked up Destiny O. Birdsong's poetry collection. I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna love it, I'm excited about this one. The next poetry collection I purchased is less justifiable. It's The Complete Poems of Jim Harrison. It's huge. I'm not gonna finish this. I don't know when I will finish it, if I could finish it. Like, but it's so pretty. It's just a really well-packaged book, and it's Copper Canyon Press, whom I adore, and it's just all of his writings and poems. And I like that. I like that it's all of them. I like that this book is everything poetry-wise that Jim Harrison wrote. Next, I picked up Papa Show by Leonie Ross. This book has been following me around for a while. I feel like we all get these books when we go into bookstores or libraries that keep catching our eye, but we assume that we'll just get to later. But this was recently long-listed for the Women's Prize, and I think like that was the final straw. I was like, fine, I'll pick this up. This is the one that I want to read of the prize long list that I haven't read so far. I believe it is differently titled in the UK, but this is the US version, and I love this cover, and I, I just, it has to be done at this point. Like, it's beyond me. Another prize purchase, and I purchased many books off of the Booker International long list. I was very impressed with the long list this year, but one that I wanted to get to sooner than later was Claudia Pinheiro's Elena Knows, which is translated by Francis Riddle. And I was interested in this book when I heard Jen Campbell talk about it, I think in her Charco Press, like, sale video that she did, which I thought was really charming. Um, and I love Charco Press too, and I think that she sold me on this, at least in terms of making me interested in it. And when it was longlisted for the Booker Prize, I was like, yes, absolutely. I'll get this one first and then see what else I can get to later. The next book is a repurchase for me because I lost my original copy, and it's The Night is Short, Walk On Girl. This is by Tomihiko Morimi, and it's translated by Emily Balistreri. And this is the book that inspired my favorite movie, The Night is Short, Walk On Girl, which is an animated film. The artwork from the film is on this cover 
of the translation. It's published by Yen Press. My pitch for the movie of this book when I want to get people to watch it is a bunch of friends go out drinking one night and over the course of that night all four seasons pass. I think that's a really good pitch. The book is a little bit different. The book is a little bit more like unrequited doting love story, but the insanity is still really there. The last book I got is a continuation of a series that I have loved for a long time now, and that is Anne Bishop's Others series. This is Crowbones, the latest book. This is in the world of the Others, so I think it's part of the spin-offs of the main series. I don't think she's written a book in the main series or plans to anytime soon, which is very frustrating because I love those characters and I would love to hear from them, but hopefully maybe in this one there will be some crossover. Many of you might be familiar with my written in red review, which is a little bit of old school Matthew. If you haven't seen it before, I'll link it below. It's a good time. And I think that this is just a really oddly comforting, paranormal, could be otherwise incredibly dark and scary given its content uh, series. The books themselves are incredibly cozy despite the world inside of them being so dark, and I think that's why I like them. You get to indulge in the dark fantasy without having to endure the empathy of experiencing that. So those were the books that I purchased while I was in the hospital. I am incredibly nervous about having to administer antibiotics through my veins and hopefully I will be able to read some of these new books as a way to comfort myself throughout the next four weeks. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, opinions, or beliefs about anything else that I've mentioned in this video, you can put those below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.